Welcome back to Tarot by the Bay. I'm David. Okay. The Trump 2016 election interference case, otherwise known as um, the campaign finance fraud case, otherwise known as the Stormy Daniels hush money case. Three of Wands just popped up. Um, news is coming out that Hope Hicks is expected to testify for the prosecution in this case. Um, Hope Hicks, as you might recall, was a 30-something-year-old uh, attractive woman that Donald Trump had as his press secretary, um, I think it was press secretary, during his uh, campaign in 2016. And would always call for Hope or Hopey, you know, he just, he was enamored with her. Good looking woman, you can imagine what Donald Trump's intentions might be for something like that. Okay. Here's what we've got um, according to this article from NBC News. Court records indicate Hope Hicks called Michael Cohen at 7, 7.20 p.m. on October 8th, 2016. Okay, so this she had not talked with him. By the way, an Access Hollywood tape came out on October 7th. So Access, Howard, Access Hollywood tape out on October 7th. And then the next night on October 8th, Hope Hicks uh, reaches out to... Michael Cohen. <clears throat> After she connects, Donald Trump joins the call. That call lasts for four minutes. Then Hicks and Cohen speak privately after Trump left the call. And after that call, Michael Cohen phoned David Pecker. Pecker is the president of AMI. They're the people that own the National Enquirer. Okay, so what might they be dis discussing? Here's one thought, you know, we know that we've, we've got the whole Stormy Daniels thing. <clears throat> we know that David Pecker probably made an offer to Stormy Daniels um, with regards to catching and killing that story. So they're probably discussing what they're going to do, what their plans are with this Stormy Daniels story. Okay, so we are here now on October 8th at 7 o'clock at night. Hope Hicks hasn't talked with Michael Cohen in several weeks. Calls him you know, basically out of the blue a day after the um, Access Hollywood tape. Uh, Michael Cohen talks with David Pecker, the head of AMI. After that conversation ends, Michael Cohen gets a call from a gentleman named H Howard, who is the chief content officer at AMI. So AMI, AMI is calling um, Michael Cohen back. Cohen then calls um, Hope Hicks and spoke, after he talked with Hope Hicks, he calls David Pecker again. So now there's like information exchange going on, you know, tell Donald Trump, this is what Pecker and AMI is telling me, tell that to Trump, and then he's going back to discuss more things with David Pecker. This is, mind you, within 40 minutes of that initial call. <clears throat> um, at eight, at 8.03, so this is 43 minutes after that call, according to the uh, court records, Michael Cohen called Donald Trump and they talked for eight minutes. So, Hope Hicks calls Michael Cohen, Donald Trump gets on the line, they talk. Michael Cohen calls David Pecker, they talk. AMI calls, talks to um, Michael Cohen, he talks. He talks with Hope Hicks, talks with David Pecker again. Donald Trump and Michael Cohen talk. Okay, got it? <laughs> with little fan puppets. I wish I had little hand puppets. Um, uh, then uh, two and a half weeks later on October 26th, Cohen and um, uh, Donald Trump speak twice, and that's the day that the $130,000 is moved to an escrow account that would be sent to Stormy Daniels' attorney as agreement uh, to secure her silence. Okay, so there's your, your basically your three-week timeline of what's what was going on around that time point. Now, I know there were recordings of Michael Cohen and Donald Trump talking about paying Stormy Daniels and Trump was saying, you know, should we pay her with a check or with, you know, cash? And Mike's like, no, 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 we don't pay her cash. We're going to pay her. We're going to wire a check over here. And remember that conversation quite distinctly. So that could very well be the uh, the October 26th where they talk twice and they're going to wire the money over here. <clears throat> Sorry for the long intro, but it, it's good that we get on the same page here and understand what her role is in all this. Now, according to her attorney... Um, Hope Hicks did get interviewed by the FBI in 2019. That affidavit was unsealed, 
and it appears that um, there might be some inconsistencies in her testimony. Hope Hicks' uh, attorney is saying that she, her, her uh, testimony was truthful, that she first became aware of the issue is in early November 2016 as a result of press inquiries. I think what we might have here is splitting hairs. She knew that there were discussions afoot as to what to do with Stormy Daniels. She may not have known about the the money details of it, but she knew what the general uh, plan was going to be. I think she's splitting hairs. So I want to look at the energy of Hope Hicks on this trial, and then I'm going to ask if Hope Hicks is, has perjured herself. Okay? Entertainment purposes only. What is the general energy around Hope Hicks with this uh, trial that's coming up? in uh, a few weeks in New York City, the New York uh, criminal trial. Ah, the devil. People voluntarily chaining themselves to the devil and doing what the devil wants. This is, you know, again, addictions, uh, horrible relationships, uh, obsession, you know, less greed, avarice, the seven deadly sins, that type of thing. It just... Donald Trump, again, eats at your morals and, and things along those lines. And people will bend over backwards to enable this man. And in the same time, he pulls your behavior down to his level. Crossed with the Seven of Wands um, and the Page of Pentacles. I think Hope Hicks was running a lot of, <clears throat> had a lot of things going on. Uh, a lot of tasks that she had to do in service of Donald Trump and his campaign, his, uh, you know, basically his corrupt campaign of 2016. And underneath it, this is one of the challenges that she was dealing with, which is the hush money payment, getting the money out to the person who had an affair with Donald Trump. And you got to keep this information down because the Access Hollywood tape's out and they're doing all sorts of damage control. That was like, the Access Hollywood tape was the only time you have ever heard Donald Trump apologize for something he did. And he was livid after that. And he's never apologized for it since. He was absolutely livid. I remember that too. There, Cause they're just like, you know, for one brief moment, he listened to his handlers and did what a normal person would do. And after that, he has never done what a normal person would do ever, ever again. Too humiliating to admit that he made a mistake. In the past, this is Donald the billionaire. You know, grab him by the hoo-ha and do whatever that you want. Because money will always buy him out of his problems. He has always been able to outspend other people to avoid problems. And the ones he couldn't buy out and that actually took him to court, he would delay, delay, delay and run them out of money that way. You know, when you're a wealthy, famous person, you can do anything you want. You know what I mean? Current situation, the Four of Wands. It's a criminal offense. If you commit perjury for this guy, you can end up going to um, to jail or to prison. And, you know, this is not, this. Uh, these are felonies, federal felonies. You're not going to go to jail. You're going to go to prison if you lie. And this, I, I'm not saying that Hope Hicks is going to commit perjury and go to prison, but that's what's at stake here. Donald Trump is also at risk of going to prison. Now, given his... Um, given his position as a former president, I would not expect Donald Trump to see the inside of a jail cell at Rikers Island. Lord knows he has earned that privilege. Kind of his whole, his whole damn suite, get a whole corner suite to himself. Uh, they won't do that. They'll give him house arrest before this happens. Sorry, I don't like it either, but that's just the reality of it. Um, but this is also, here comes the court date. You, you have interaction in, with this. It's court date time. We want to hear your testimony. Overarching energy. Page of Swords. She's going to tell what she knows. Donald Trump is not going to like that. Because the whole thing with Donald Trump is you lie 
lie and lie some more and you don't answer questions and if you do answer them you tell lies and then you say what's the big deal if i was lying it's it it, I, it was a question you should have never asked in the first place everybody lies you know he tries to normalize things i think hope picks is gonna have to tell some stories out of school that trump is not going to be real happy about but here's your choice you can perjure yourself and you know what's going to happen. Lesson to be learned is the fool. It's her choice. <laughs> Are you in service of the devil or not? If you want to be in service of him and lie, and trust me, when you get to a court of law with all the data that's out there, lying is a bad idea. That's going to get you over here behind bars. Or you can... Say what you got to say. He's going to be wildly disappointed at your betrayal, but you will be free of Donald Trump at that point because he's not going to want you back in his orbit. He might say a mean tweet about you, but he does that about a lot of people. End of the day, outcome. Mama's going to take care of Mama. I think she is going to explain what she knew. Um... <laughs> It's funny because the empress is the is the pregnant woman. Um, Melania would not have been pregnant at that point. As viewers have pointed out, you can't be pregnant in home with Baron if Baron's your only child. Bar you've given birth to Baron. Uh, this is Melania at home with her kid. This is um, Hope Hicks, you know, making the choice to protect herself and her freedoms and her best interest. Uh, that is what will happen, assuming that Hope Hicks has a lawyer that Hope Hicks is paying for and not that lawyer that Donald Trump is paying for. If Donald Trump is paying for your lawyers, that's a lawyer for Donald Trump and you are gonna be introduced to the bus. I think Hope Hicks understands at this point that she doesn't wanna cross Donald Trump using his own attorneys because that bus will have her name on it. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on. I think from the looks of this, Hope Picks right now is going to is going to say what she knows and not commit perjury under oath. Um, now that being said, that was one of the questions I want to ask. Will has she perjured herself with these apparent inconsistencies? Is she splitting hairs? I think she's splitting hairs. That that that's been my uh, assessment. You know, you have to look at how people write things. Report, it's like a Hicks lawyer, Robert Trout, said in a statement, reports claiming that Ms. Hicks was involved in conversations about hush money payments on October 8th, 2016, or knew that the payments were being discussed are simply wrong. So I would say in 2016, when she was on the phone with Michael Cohen, they weren't talking about payments. They were talking about what they were going to do with this situation. So that payments is the the key word that's the word that they're splitting hairs on okay that's my critical thinking skills kicking in here is she splitting hairs or she and her lawyer splitting hairs six of coins well here's your hush money payment right here's the man with all the money giving the money to the 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 giving a little bit of money to Stormy Daniels, $130,000. And here's Karen McDougal over here getting even less than that. This woman actually wanted a relationship with Donald Trump. Ew. I, don't, I think she said at the time, maybe she didn't realize Trump was married. I don't, I don't remember. I'm not going to make excuses for her. You know, it is what it is. But here we go. Here's your hush money payments right there. Queen of Swords. Talk about splitting hairs. That's a real sharp sword to split a hair with. Queen of Swords, though, is um, and Knight of Wands underneath. So Queen of Swords is a harsh decision. Very black and white issue here. Very good for a legal case, by the way. Knight of Wands is a progression of actions. So what we're going to discuss here is hush money payments and you know the timeline events took place and who said what to whom and when did they say it? Who knew what they knew and when did they know it? Again, this Queen of Swords card, think of it as 
for those of you familiar with like Judge Judy on uh, on uh, 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 the court shows on TV, just a real no nonsense or a real t real tough uh, mom. Uh, Kamala Harris would probably fall under that boat as well uh, if she had ever had uh, daughters of her own. It's just kind of the you're telling me that you were talking with him after, right after this about this and there was no discussion of money, huh? Yes or no? And she's going to say no. And, you know, it's, it's going to have to be, um, you know, it's like, okay, so they didn't talk dollars and cents, right? Okay. But you knew that they were looking to kill the story and that was going to cost money, right? Well, I wouldn't want to assume anything. See, that's where you, you start getting them splitting hairs. I would not be surprised if a naivety card doesn't come up in this reading because this is the person who takes the Six of Cups naivety card and stabs it right through the heart. It says, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, in the past, you got the Three of Wands. Um, Stormy did... Stormy does. Hope Hicks knew something was up. She was part of the negotiations. She may not have been... Part, uh, she may not have been in the conversations about what the final dollar amount was, but her saying that she wasn't part of this, that's disingenuous. That really is disingenuous. And I think the, um, well, she's not on trial, okay? She's going to be a witness for the government, but this is looking outside the trial. I, I would have, I would find it really hard to believe that, she wouldn't have known details about something like this going on. Current situation is the world card. Is she splitting hairs? Um, I think she is. I really do think she is. But this is where this this they're not going to go after her for inconsistencies in her term in her testimony. Uh, it might be a little bit of a harshness in the in the uh, cross by. Donald Trump's attorneys on Hope Hicks's um, uh, on Hope Hicks's testimony. Basically, I only think it's, I could see what Donald Trump's lawyers are saying. But there, nowhere in this conversation did they discuss money, right? And she'll say, "Oh yes, that's correct." And you know, they'll try and rest their case, saying, "You see, her her testimony is completely worthless because she didn't hear that they were discussing money." Um, but I think. All Hope Hicks is doing is she's setting the table for the whole story. It's not that she knew about the money. She did. It's not that she knew about the money. She's just setting up what the conversation was the day after the um, Access Hollywood incident and negotiation, setting up those negotiations and passing information along from Donald Trump to AMI and AMI back to Donald Trump via Michael Cohen. Overarching energy is the Ace of Swords. Again, splitting hairs with a really sharp sword. Um, this will be an interesting testament to her character. She has been aligned with the... Uh, she's been aligned with the devil in the previous times. Now it's time for her. If you're going to save yourself, this is where you save yourself. You, so Ace of Swords... Sword of justice, sword of truth. You better tell the truth. Because if you don't, they will go after you. You know, this world card only works if you're telling the truth. You're going to go through kind of a little bit of a harsh cross-examination. <clears throat> but you will tell the truth on this one. Lesson to be learned is the tower. Somebody's going to go down. Somebody's going to fall for this one. And Hope Picks gets to decide. Is it going to be her? Or is it going to be Donald Trump that goes down for this? Hope Hicks didn't, you know, commit adultery. Hope Hicks didn't send money to a porn star. Hope Hicks didn't violate any campaign finance laws. She's had none of it. Why would you put yourself in harm's way for somebody else who was doing something illegal? Don't do it. Tell the truth. Avoid that. This could be... A key, a, a nice key part, though, because it's going to link Trump's actions, what had just happened with um, Access Hollywood, and then what happened next with AMI. Outcome is the Seven of Cups. Um, if you tell the truth, you know you're. It's about this is a card about integrity and delusions and such. 
Um, her integrity may take a little bit of a beating. And I think, again, it's because she'll tell the truth, but she's going to lie by omission. You know, again, when she says, well, you know, I didn't really, I had nothing to do with the money parts of it. Yeah, but you knew a lot of other stuff too. So her integrity m might go down a little bit. Um, but it really, honestly, it depends on how truthful she is under, uh, under oath. Donald Trump might ha be a little disillusioned with Hope Hicks after her testimony if she tells the truth. I thought, I thought she was on my side. <clears throat> little Four Carter, what is Hope Hicks's impact on this trial? We'll, we'll call it a call it a wrap on this one. What is Hope Hicks's um, testimony? How does it impact the trial? Hearing noises outside the door. I don't think I'm going to get cat bombed in this video. Michelle was home all day with the cat, so he's not feeling the need to have be the center of attention. Of course, I've been gone all day, so he might want to be the center of my attention, but he's got other people to distract him. Hope Hicks, <laughs> unless I get a reading on the cat. Hope Hicks, what's the impact of her uh, testimony on this case? I'm not sure if I'm going to get a, a test. Uh, the cards will be interesting. It's either going to be the impact of her testimony on the case or her impact on Donald Trump's emotional state. And they both could be the same thing. Queen of Cups. Um, I don't think she blows the lid off of the case. Um, I think she she answers the questions asked. She's not going to volunteer anything, anything uh, else other than that. Page of Cups. Yeah, she's going to... Death card, government, six of swords. Um, she's going to answer the questions. It's not going to be dynamite. I'm not saying like she's going to put seal the case with her testimony. Hers is just a part of it. It's just a connector part of it. She's going to get in. She's going to say her piece. She's going to maintain her composure and get out. And get out she will. This will be the last we hear of Hope Hicks on this case. Um... I don't think we're going to hear from her on any other cases because I, uh, she was out of Donald Trump's sphere of influence by the time Georgia happened, the Mar-a-Lago documents case happened, and the January 6th stuff. She was out of that orbit. So this is the only thing she's going to be involved with. After this, we, we probably don't hear from Hope Picks again. After her testimony, her testimony brings this chapter of her life to a close. <clears throat> the king is dead. Long live the king. I think it just, hers is just, it's going to complete the story. It's just going to be a link in the story. Uh, a weird story about uh, a weird relationship between a wealthy man and a woman who stars in adult movies. Um, <laughs> Donald Trump gave Hope Hicks a lot of uh, breaks in her career, shall we say. And... Probably she would like to put that weirdness from eight years ago in her past and not think about it ever again. Um, also, we have here is the government. You know, this is the court case. I think once she's done, she's done. They're not going to go after her for anything else. They're just going to cut her loose because there are so many other uh, people to investigate, cases to bring, that she's honestly small potatoes. In the grand scheme of things, as long as she doesn't, you know, like flat out lie, perjure herself and do something detrimental to this case, they'll let her go. They'll let her walk. And I know we want everybody who's been involved in the uh, dumpster fire that that was that administration and all the laws that they broke. We want them all to uh, be held accountable equally under the law. There just aren't enough resources to do it. It's kind of like when you've got a mob of 150 people storming a department store and then all running out the exits. You can't get them all, but you want to get the, the leaders and the guys with the most stuff. Um, 
yeah, some are going to get away. But if you get the if you get the leadership and you get the guys who had the biggest haul, uh, you know, ninety ten rule or eighty twenty rule, you get eighty percent of the stuff done with twenty percent of the effort. The other eighty percent effort to get the last twenty percent might be better spent somewhere else. Is it fair? No, it's not. Is it just? Eh, not really either. But it's it's what you got with the resources that you have. We'll just take the victories where we can get them. Live off <laughs> the rest of your life. Uh, I'll leave it at this. Thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your uh, your kind words, your shares, your likes, everything you do to help boost the YouTube algorithm so that this video makes it out to a wider audience. To folks just discovering this channel recently or for the first time, welcome to the channel. I hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.